<laughs> you know what? Let me bring on Reverend Jesse Jackson, who is joining us from England. Reverend Jackson, how are you? Good morning, how, how, all of you. Good morning. Good morning, Reverend Jackson. Good morning, Reverend Jackson. We've had the most magnificent journey across this country this week from London to Bristol to Liverpool to um, Nottingham to Sheffield. It's it's a country that we must get to know more about because it so much mirrors America and vice versa. And to spend the time connecting people of color and of Africans to find here as Africans from Africa, it's many parts and the Caribbean and uh, East Asia. It's been a magnificent journey. We'll talk more about that in weeks to come. But in the coming days, school will be opening again. We're facing a crisis where our youth have been overrated by mass media, overwhelmed by mass media culture, where uh, we are being talked down to, looked down to, uh, and now we are recycling degradation into self-degradation. It concerns me very much. I remember growing up as a child in South Carolina. We heard the word MF, but we were taught better to lift our minds by lifting our language. Uh, we, we, we heard uh, the SOB. We were taught it was not right and what it meant and to, to lift our minds above it. Uh, we were taught not to recycle the worst of the, the culture meant to demean calling women bitch, bees, and H's, and calling out people ends. We all heard it, we all, but we resisted it. That seemed to, we seem to be recycling it and making a profit out of it. It's, it's become a business. As Dr. Roberts was saying, I can imagine when school opens this year, when in some integrated class, when some black kid refers to MF in book, uh, the expulsion rate is higher. The suspension rate is, is higher. We went to school to learn bigger and better words because of the power of language. And so the what concerns me about this is not the intent of building a positive message, but we can read a book without it being an MFing book. We can read a Bible without referring to the Bible that way. Uh, we can buy land and not buy cars in the same way. So I'm deeply troubled by lowering language and teaching down to us. I, I close on this note before opening for more discussion. I remember as a child in the sixth grade, I uh, went to Mrs. Shelton's class, and I didn't know why about nine of us were in two classrooms, about five of us in the other classroom. We were trying to avoid Mrs. Shelton's class because she taught up to us. She walked in the classroom and said, sit up, Rick, sit up right, talk to me a diaphragm, and we didn't quite know what all that meant except sit up straight. <laughs> she went to the board and began to write these big words. We began to push the loud that this is sixth grade, not the eighth. We thought she was using eighth grade words because we had just come from fifth grade. She said, I know what these words are. This is called a polysyllabic term, poly meaning many. And this is a dictionary, and this is the real Jason Soros. And she said, I will, I know where you come from. I will, teach, I will not teach down you little brats. One of y'all might run for president or governor one day, and I don't want to be made ashamed. And she kept it at that, that level. And I ran for president in 84. She had retired. She ran for state representative on my ticket and became the first black female state rep in South Carolina's century last year. She would not teach down to us. And I can't turn her loose. Uh, and music should not degrade us. It should not take us down to lift us up. Because if we go down, we might not get back up. I appeal to us. In music and movie and culture, please, let's lift up and not tear down. That is my point of view. And I do not question the motives uh, of the writers or the singers, but its impact this coming year is going to have some devastating impacts. Well, Reverend Jackson, before you go, uh, Bamani Arma. Mm -hmm. could, could you could you respond to that? Because we, we do yeah, want definitely. to... Uh, Reverend Jackson, I'm completely honored to be on your show. Um, as everyone knows, you're definitely a general in, in the whole the whole movement to try to move black people forward. Um, but I'm def I definitely feel like I'm a, I'm a sergeant out here in the field. Um, my best friend, the guy who stood next to me when I got married, is a vice principal. Um, my dean, when I played, was a vice principal. And they both keep pushing me to push out this song. And it's not even on the, it's not even on the more literal idea of this being a positive message, just for, message for young people, but more on the idea of this showing how ridiculous this current culture that they're involved in is. Um, they are already using the MF in class. They are already using a whole bunch of foul language in class. And, and they're also already having a value system that's completely messed up. And this song, as a parody of what they're listening to, takes the power 
out of what they've been indoctrinated with. I got an email. I get emails all the time for young students who said they've been teased before about being the white kid in an all-black school, even though they're black, because they have good grades. But they thank me for showing how ridiculous their classmates who 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 worship these things are looking. You know what I'm saying? They completely understand the satire. They understand that they're not supposed to say MF, but they do understand the satire, and they understand that I'm saying that the power, the power that Little John tapped into, a hot beat with a repetitive chant, is beautiful. It's beautiful, but you could use that power for something different. And I could have, I could have come out and I could have written an essay about it. I could have written one of these long didactic hip-hop songs about why and how our music should be changed, but instead... For a generation that completely understands satire, that helped Dave Chappelle sell a million copies in a matter of days, I did satire to let them see what is really important, in my opinion. But you know, I think that the song empowers Michael Richards and Amos uh, because if uh, we are willing to use this language and make a profit from it and dance to it, mm-hmm. then why can't Michael Richards use it? I think he shouldn't use it. I think we shouldn't. I think if, if we can use this language, and why I must can't, it puts us in a position of trying to bifurcate our ethics. And uh, we're less able now to challenge I must not come back on the air. We're less able to take Michael Richards back off the stage because when we popularize, in some sense, but the NAA tried to bury it, we've resurrected again and rationalized it as a good thing. I cannot see the wholesomeness and using language that you can't use on CBS, ABC, and NBC. You can't use it in church. Uh, you, you, there are too many places you can't use it, uh, and I, I, I do not get it. I, w- I mean, I would think, I would hope that, and I do think that Richards and um, Imus are, are sophisticated enough to understand context, to understand that the way they use the word is completely unacceptable because of who they are, where they are, and what they meant to say. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the, the context and in, in, in my intent, um, any other word would not have worked. It was completely necessary to make that point in order to make fun of and satirize the current state of hip-hop. And I, like I said, once again, I think the young people understand that as well.